And we are live. Hey guys, this is Rob from Red Beach One Studios in Marshfield, Massachusetts. And this is episode number 25 of the Red Beach One Studios Bench Report. And uh, we're going to cover down on a few things here today. And uh, it's been a while. It's been a while since we re recorded a video. Uh, we've had a couple different delays here and there. Uh, different activities going on. Uh, local VFW local legion post and different things going on so we haven't had a lot of free time especially on weekends uh as many as you know uh we're weekend warriors with the hobby as far as bench time goes so uh you know saturday afternoon sundays and more recently it's uh become sundays only type of deal for a few hours um unfortunately uh, due to some localized restrictions and different things going on with the landlord and, and different things we our studios here is, is rental property so it's like you know we, we pay rent each month and uh, this is our studios up here and uh, we're on the second floor we got a couple businesses down downstairs uh, this particular building is uh, it was originally built back in the 1800s and it was part of a railway freight depot uh, so uh, and it's been uh, more recently in the past five years has been uh, completely uh, renovated uh, upstairs uh, to provide us with our studios and living quarters and whatnot. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we don't own the building. Uh, we do have a landlord. Uh, and uh, we had a little visit from the landlord last night unannounced. And, uh, you know, they put out some new ground rules that they want to implement here um, that includes our studios and what we can and can't do here and different things and uh, so we're somewhat limited uh, so the, the, the noose got a little bit tighter and uh, we have to tread lightly on cer certain things and keep things under wraps and uh, it's most unfortunate but that's just how it is here uh, unfortunately uh, living in the Boston area you know people are kind of hardcore around here and that's just how it is you know uh, we enjoy being where we are uh, our location is great, and it's uh, close proximity to everything we like to do. It's close to our work, so our commute's not too far. Uh, but everything that we that we have here, uh, whether it's the post office, our uh, personal bank, or uh, you know town hall, or restaurants that we go to, or things like the VFW or a Legion Post or whatnot, it's all within easy driving or even walking distance, for that matter. Uh, but anyway. That's where we are with that. We wanted to give a qu quick update on that. Uh, we've been here at our current location for three years now, going on four. And uh, we have a, a, a great new sign out, out front and uh, out by the street, too. So we have actually two now. Um, those went up a year or so ago. So uh, unfortunately, since we put those signs up, it's, it's put us under the microscope with the landlord and uh, what we're doing up here and, you know, different things going on and it's like uh, not everybody understands the hobby and uh, that's just how it is and uh, so we have to keep things under wrap here and uh, unfortunately uh, during the week uh, sometimes there's construction going on in the building or different things going on downstairs uh, with businesses and stuff like that uh, so it's not uncommon to have uh, the landlord give us a you know a 24-hour notice that you know uh, workers or maintenance crews or something like that will be entering the building or uh, if, if the business downstairs needs access to our studios or apartment up here uh, because of the stairway system and all that uh, you know different things going on um, so we have to it's a little bit different it's not like we're living in, a, in, a, in an apartment complex or something like that it's privately owned uh, you know different things but that's where we are with that we wanted to touch on base with that. We don't want to take too much time with that mumbo jumbo. Uh, we want to cover down on some things that have been going on here at Red Beach One Studios, and that's our primary focus of the day. Uh, so that's that's the direction that we're going in. Uh, we have have not had a lot of bench time lately. Uh, you know, different things happening, uh, extracurricular activities, different things. Uh, so we're just now today uh, get getting back to the the model bench and uh, one of the things that we've uh, managed to adapt to uh, we've actually gone back a little bit a little bit of retro going on here where uh, we've made our hobby bench our hobby tools and all the things that we use uh, for modeling uh, so it's portable uh, going back a few years ago 
Uh, we were involved with, uh, you know, Nordland AMPS meetings and going to monthly model meetings, model clubs, and all that sort of thing. So uh, I developed a system, a personal system with a toolbox and different things. Uh, we're all the modeling tools like hobby knives, sandpaper, tweezers, uh, nippers, all that kind of stuff uh, is all in one box and it can be easily picked up and transported and it's it's essentially a toolbox like you'd use for, you know, I might use for work or a construction worker might use or a carpenter might use or something like that. Uh, but for me, that's, uh, I come from that line of work, you know, the contracting field anyway, so something like this is uh, easy for me to adapt to and we've made everything a little bit more concise here at at the hobby bench where everything is if we all of a sudden have to pack up things and put things away due to some construction going on with the building or the landlord needing to get in here or something like that uh, we could easily uh, pack it up and put it away uh, we have a spare room that we have our stash in uh, we now have a lock on it because some things have been disappearing out of there uh, unfortunately uh, we live in a uh, I guess you'd call it a rough neighborhood you know, but anyway, uh, but it's not uncommon to have theft or thievery or uh, different things like that going on, and uh, a lot of things go unaccountable, and uh, you know they go missing or whatnot. So we've uh, had to adapt to that. And uh, one of the things we're doing here is that we're keeping all of our model kits, our model stuff, out of sight. So it can easily be broke down, put away, kept it out of sight in a room with a lock on it, and you know. Uh, unless they have explosive devices or a blowtorch or something, they're not going to be able to get to it. But anyway, uh, that's where we are with that. We have a couple new projects that are coming up. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up some, some older projects and some sh shelf queens. We're going to focus some attention on that. Uh, we have a couple new projects that we'd like to get to, uh, some different approaches to modeling, uh, some different genres of modeling, and you'll see see, see that. Uh, starting to appear here and there at Red Beach One Studios in our video and our social media and all that sort of thing. Uh, but we're going to cover down on that really quick so we can get that done and out of the way. Uh, going back a couple weeks now, uh, we put in an order to, uh, actually two separate orders to Andy's Hobby Headquarters. Uh, Andy Klein is a great friend of ours and uh, he's actually from Massachusetts out in Chicopee. So uh, Andy's Hobby Headquarters has got a great thing going on. And uh, we'll cover down on some of that. But one of the more recent things and new things that we've gotten into here is uh, 48 scale uh, armor. Uh, more specifically, uh, the Tamiya kits. Uh, we purchased a T-55 a year ago. And then we were down at ArmorCon down in Southbury, Connecticut. We picked up a, a, an 8 rad armored car, a German armored car, uh, 48 scale. Uh, but this, we ended up picking up a uh, 48 scale uh, World War II British, uh, Matilda Mach 3, Mach 4, uh, and we actually have the 35th scale kit, but this is the 48th scale kit, so it's a smaller scale. Uh, we're going to put that across the screen right now. This is uh, a new kit for us. It's been out for a while, but we saw some other people building it, and uh, it's prompted us to make a purchase on this. We got a good deal on it, and uh, we wanted to do uh, the British counter scheme, which is depicted on the the box art here so uh, that's one of the things we want to try out some masking and uh, doing different colors and switching in and out of colors and uh, we're going to be trying out the gallery uh, Mobius airbrushes uh, the point zero two which is for fine detail and whatnot and then the point zero three uh, we have that one as well and uh, we're going to be giving those a, a workout and trying some of those out and some of our other gallery airbrushes as well but we wanted to uh, focus our attention with a small scale kit, something that's quick, easy build, and focus our attention on the paint scheme and weathering and uh, different things like that. Uh, something quick and easy that uh, it's enjoyable, it's different. We've been wanting to do a, a World War II British subject in North Africa for a while, so it's going to be a nice little change of pace, uh, especially from all the German and all that Russian and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, we wanted to cover down on that. And our next thing here. Uh, our next kit, we made an additional purchase. Uh, we've been paying attention to some of our uh, fellow modelers out there, some of the guys out there like Rick Lawler. Uh, he did his a uh, Malta story, uh, Spitfire. Um, 
and then over on uh, Rinaldi Studio Press, Mike Rinaldi on the world's Patreon page has been working on his uh, technical guide number one, uh, the chipping book, and uh, because we're subscribed to his uh, Patreon page, he's been doing a lot of different uh, aircraft kits and 48 scale armor kits, and that's some of the reason why I've been prompted to do some of these other things is because of that. Uh, it's impressed us enough to to try and and, and uh, you know try out some of these other things, other scales, other genres of modeling. Uh, but long story short, we've been seeing some different reviews. Uh, there's a new model company out there that's new to us. It's called Magic Factory. They've been putting out some armor kits and stuff here and there, and uh, some great subjects. And uh, one of the kits that they put out uh, probably uh, within within the, the year or so, right? Uh, it is a 48 scale, and this is a dual kit. So this this model kit, you're getting two model kits uh, in this box. It's it's not like a you know uh, it's two separate models. You can buy build one of two different versions, uh, but it's the F4U1A slash or forward slash two Corsair. So uh, not that we usually build airplane kits or uh, aircraft kits, but uh, we do like World War II fighter planes and different things like that, warbirds and everything. And one of our favorite planes, uh, because we're a Marine, is the F4U-1 Corsair, and uh, this is a great model. We're going to put this across the screen. This is from Magic Factory. Uh, there's some great reviews, great build reviews uh, from our friends over at the, uh, the, mo uh, the Modeling News. Um, it's probably Clayton Ockerby down there doing it, but uh, anyway... We got this kit, we got it here, and Andy ha happened to have these things in stock. We've been seeing that uh, they've been sold out everywhere else. A Andy managed to get a container, and he brought in some new new Magic Factory to put it out. We got a super deal on this, guys. Super deal. F4U1A is slash 2, which is <clears throat> the Night Fighter version of the Corsair. So there's two, two Corsair kits in this box. You can build both versions. There's enough parts in this model to build two two different airplane kits so that that to us is a bargain it's an amazing kit guys magic factory has done what typical other armor manufacturers say for instance like uh, border model or tacom or meng or uh, ryefield model they've taken th that same technology and applied it to an aircraft model and uh... you know we've been out of the loop with airplane kits we're used to the old stuff like Ravel and Monogram and, and Pro Modeler and all that kind of stuff, uh, some of the Tamiya stuff. But um, this is pretty impressive. We're not typically an aircraft model builder, so we're going to get some advice from some of our model buddies out there that do build aircraft, and uh, we're going to cover down on that. It's, it's going to be a long time, pro long process for us because we're not used to doing aircraft kits, but we want to do a nice job on it. Uh, and one of the things we're going to have to do is get, get new model paints and stuff. So. Uh, one of the things we want to get moving forward are the, are the new real colors, and we're going to focus our attention on uh, Na U.S. Navy and Marine Corps uh, colors that they use in the Pacific, uh, more specifically to Corsairs. But anyway, we're going to cover down on all that stuff later on. We just wanted to get it out there um, and have some new material, some fresh new blood going through our veins and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we want to cover down on that, and uh, that's where we are with that. And uh, we have a few other projects coming up, and we're going to be doing some a little bit of homework here and there, and uh, we're going to be revamping things and trying to make improvements here at the studios. Uh, we've been under the gun lately, and uh, we've had to make some adjustments and uh, lateral changes here and there, changes to schedules and different things. So, uh, you know, th these are the things that are going on, and we've had to adapt and everything, and, uh, you know... Uh, our videos are still in this raw, unedited format, and I know some of you guys don't like the camera angle here, but uh, unfortunately, that's just how it is. We got the bullet hole over here. We got a skylight over there. Uh, that, that's just how it is. You know, sunlight coming through. It's a nice sunny day here in Marshfield. Uh, it's up in the 50s right now. Uh, having some nice spring weather for a change. A little bit, a lot of rain, but it's typical for April. But at least it's not icy cold and snowy and that kind of crap. Uh, we've experienced all that all went along and, and it's time for a change. But anyway, uh, that's where we are that, guys. Uh, we wanted to cover down on a few other things here today. Uh, we want to give out a couple shout-outs to uh, some of our fellow 
armor modelers and, and podcasters and YouTubers out there. And uh, we wanted to cover down on uh, our good buddy Rick Lawler. Uh, he's been doing some great material. He's been doing a lot of these uh, new behind this behind the curtain videos over on his Patreon page. So uh, he's he himself has had some some changes and different things. He's been doing a lot of work with AK Interactive. Uh, which is another thing that we're, we want to get to ourselves is because uh, w since we've gotten uh, our promotional stuff from Gallery Airbrush and all that, we have a um, an affiliate program with them. So we've been uh, working behind the scenes with Gallery Airbrush and different things. There's going to be some new things coming out for Red Beach One Studios in regards to that. But in addition to that, we're also working together with AK Interactive over in Spain and uh, we've been working really hard on promoting their new products and the new new items coming up on each month So you've noticed a lot of advertisements some of our social media is directed towards AK interactive and uh, That's because uh, we're working towards getting an endorsement from them um, But because we need to get some of our modeling done and get some of that stuff more visible That's you know one of the more important and final steps that's needed uh, so we're going to uh, focus some attention on that and get some of that stuff out there. But um, we're, we're going to be promoting all this stuff. And uh, that's one of the things that we enjoy doing here at Red Beach One Studios. The question came up recently, what is Red Beach One Studios all about? Well, uh, yeah, that's my per our my personal uh, model interactions, uh, passions in life, uh, the hobby itself. Uh, as you may or may not know, we come from the retail end of the hobby, meaning we used to have an online uh, hobby shop and uh, selling models, uh, vending tables at various IPMS, amp shows and different things. Uh, we still do it, although we only do one show per year now at ArmorCon down in Connecticut. Um, but that's where we come from. So we're used to promotions, uh, marketing, and all that kind of stuff. So whether it be Gallery Airbrush or AK Interactive or different model brands or something like that, uh, we're going to be out there promoting all that stuff. And one of the other things we like to do because we like it and enjoy it ourselves is that we're going to be promoting uh, you know, podcasters out there related to the hobby. Uh, we're going to be covering down on YouTubers out there that put out good how-to videos and tutorials and all that kind of stuff so we get behind all those people. We like to, because it interests us, we like to share it with everybody else. And, uh, you know, that's the that's what Red Beach One Studios is all about. It's a one-man operation. It's just me. There's no, you know, other people uh, doing this. This is our personal blog. Uh, we can find... Red Beach One Studios on, on multiple social media platforms, which we'll get to in a few minutes here. Uh, but that's that's what Red Beach One Studios is all about. We're promoting the hobby itself and what we do in our personal interests in sharing it with everyone. And uh, we're, we're a spoke in the wheel and we're part of a larger community of modeling. Now, our pr primary focus is armor modeling figures in diorama and that's always going to be there because that's what our personal interests are but uh, more recently like with the magic factory course there here uh, we're going to expand that a little bit and we're going to do some uh, you know lateral moves into aircraft we're going to be doing some other things later on throughout the summer months uh, we're going to be exploring machine and krieger some sci-fi type stuff later on uh, and we're going to be moving in that direction as well, just just to try something different, try something new, uh, because one of the things that uh, you know we struggle with, we see, we seem to be kind of like trapped in that tunnel vision thing of just armor kits or just figures or diorama stuff, which we're going to cover down on. We're not going to change anything, but we're just adding on more stuff and things that are our personal interests or anything. But uh, you know. But that's where we are with that, and uh, that's what Red Beach One Studios is all about. We're more of like an ad agency or a promotional department. Uh, you know, we like to promote everyone. We like to get behind everyone. Some of the podcasters out there, uh, like Plastic Posse Podcast or the Modeling Insanity Podcast or um, like Kentucky Dave and Mike down at the Plastic Model Mojo. Uh, we definitely want to get, get behind them. We've got one of their shirts on here today. 
So uh, it's great interacting with all of these people. Uh, people like Rick Lawler and his YouTube propaganda channel or his Patreon page, or people like Mike Rinaldi with Rinaldi Studio Press and his Patreon page and YouTube channel. We get behind all of them. And uh, more recently, uh, we've had some really great interactions with another good model buddy of ours, a well-known model, Adam Wilder. And uh, we like we like the fact that he's back on the scene, and uh, we're going to get behind him and support him and help promote some of his stuff because uh, he he does some really great stuff. He has his own unique style, uh, and his recent release over from AK, the uh, Layering Techniques book. We wanted to give a shout out to that as well. Uh, Adam Wilder has done a fantastic job. Uh, we've known Adam for a long time. Uh, we've met Adam and hung up with Adam way way back in the 1990s, going back to. Uh, vending at local IPMS shows and uh, things like ArmorCon and Amps East and uh, NorEastCon, which is a regional IPMS show, going back in the, the 90s and all that, uh, when we were doing vending tables and retail and online sales and stuff like that. Uh, and that's basically where we started out. And that's the angle from the hobby that we, we're coming from. Not only do we like to work on models, but we know how to sell them and what, what's selling and what's not selling and... Uh, you know, and that's how we've 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 carved carved our path through the through the jungle on that. Uh, it's 25, 26, 27 years of of all of that combined into where we are here today. And even though we're not doing so much of the retail thing, uh, we've kind of like gone back to the hobby and gone back to our roots of where we started. And uh, you know, yet another reason why we like to try out some aircraft kits and stuff like that. Because it brings back those memories of, you know, being younger uh, as a teenager or a young kid growing up and first getting into modeling and stuff. And uh, it, it all brings it all back. So uh, that, that's the direction that we're going in. Whatever our personal enjoyment is, that's, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're not, not going to be setting any unachievable goals for ourselves as far as, like, you know, getting into live streaming or any of that type of stuff. Uh, we've kind of put that on the shelf for a little while, uh, unfortunately, uh, due to certain localized restrictions and things with the landlord going on here. It's like, uh, you know, we're skating on thin ice if we, we try to challenge that. So uh, we're still got it in the back of our mind, back in our hip pocket, but uh, we can't bring it out to the light yet because uh, it might not go over so well. And we might find ourselves out on the street or something like that and uh, or... Uh, a notice to vacate type of deal and we don't want that because we enjoy living here uh, our studios is here and that we're com comfort zone uh, it's a great location and it's got a little historical value uh, being an old railway freight house and uh, there's the, actually the the Marshfield Municipal Airport which is something else we'll get to later on uh, is right nearby so that yet it, yet another aspect is that there's always aircraft flying in and out of there uh, different things, but uh, so those are the things that have, that you know have been changing here, and we've learned to adapt, and uh, we're, we're definitely making improvements as we go along. Uh, we've had to take a few steps back in order to move forward, and then we've had to make a couple little side steps here and there. So uh, that's where we are with that, and we wanted to give a couple more quick shout outs here. Uh, to uh, Rob Riviezo for the Modeling Insanity podcast, we wanted to. Uh, cover down on that really quick because uh, we know that everyone was out at uh, the Amps Nationals out in uh, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, last weekend was the big national, uh, international event for Amps Armor Modeling Preservation Society. So uh, we know a lot of the guys, a lot of the people went out there and, uh, you know, it was all over social media or whatnot, uh, different photographs and pictures and video and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we want to give a quick shout out to Rob Riviezo and the Modeling Insanity podcast because they have something really cool coming up with that and uh, they've approached us on some different things coming up and uh, we have something in the pipeline coming up for the ArmorCon which is next fall uh, which is the regional AMPS event that uh, we actually attend. It's one of the few shows that we do now and uh, that's something that's going to be coming up in the future so be on the lookout for something like that because uh, we're going to be working together. Uh, Red Beach One Studios is going to be working together with uh, Modeling Insanity Podcast at ArmorCon. We might do some live stuff. <laughs> so anyway, that's where we are with that. 
And uh, the only other thing we wanted to cover down on is that we wanted to focus a little bit of attention on where you can find Red Beach One Studios. Uh, because we get that a lot. We're starting to get a, a, a larger following on social media now. Uh, it, in fact, it's been a little bit over the, the last few weeks, it's been like a little bit of an explosion here and there. Uh, but anyway, uh, Red Beach One Studios can be found on Telegram. Telegram is our main base of operation. We have a channel over there. We do a daily blog, have daily content, weekly content, and uh, we, we do a lot of promotions over there, whether it's armor modeling, figures, diorama, uh, new kit releases, uh, Intel drops from different manufacturers and products. Uh, we focus a lot of attention on AK Interactive, uh, things like Gallery Airbrush and different things like that. Uh, a lot of the podcasters out there like Plastic Posse Podcast, Modeling Insanity Podcast, Plastic Model Mojo, and a few others out there, skip, uh, small subjects out there. Uh, the Model Geeks podcast, you know, different ones. And uh, those are the things that we're going to be promoting. We pr promote Rick Lawler's propaganda. We promote Rick, um, Mike Rinaldi and his Rinaldi Studio Press, uh, his book releases and all that kind of stuff, and his live streaming and all that. And uh, that, that's our comfort zone with all that those things. Some of the new guys out there, like e e Evan McCallum, uh, uh, Panzermeister36, Great, great guy. Uh, we've had, had some interactions with him lately, and uh, some good things going on with that. Uh, and a few of the others out there, Clayton Ockerby from um, the Hobby Bench uh, Model Bench, and uh, the modeling news and stuff. Clayton Ockerby is doing some great videos out there, uh, how-to stuff, and um, some of the other guys that are out there, and we're covering down on all of it. Um, Red Beach One Studios can be found on Instagram. Instagram is a great marketing tool for us. We do a lot of advertisement on Instagram, and it's actually connected to our Facebook page, uh, which has become popular once again. Uh, but between Instagram and Facebook, uh, but on Instagram, we're up fairly close to 400 followers now. We're inching closer and closer to that. Uh, it's going to be a great day when we hit 400, right? Uh, but you can also find Red Beach One Studios on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. You're watching this video on that channel right now. In fact, this particular episode we're recording today, it will be dropping, episode number 25 will be dropping next Tuesday, the 23rd of April. And it will be uh, 2000, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we, we will feature a live chat uh, during the video premiere on Tuesday evening. But you'll be watching this when that happens. Uh, yeah, you can find Red Beach One Studios on YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel and click like on the video if you like our videos. And above all, hit that notifications button bell icon so you can receive notifications of when we put up new video material. Uh, we're getting a following on YouTube now, so that's great. And uh, we're starting to get some, gain some popularity. We're getting air under our wings. Or we're getting some mud on the tracks. And you can find Red Beach One Studios now. We're now on X, the social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter. Although we don't regard it as Twitter anymore. We like the X factor. So yeah, you won't see a lot of content on X just yet because it's f still fairly new to us, but uh, we're going to be moving in that direction as well. And you'll find Red Beach One Studios on X. And uh, there's so several other different social media platforms and uh, uh, high-tech things like uh, Pinterest and all that. Uh, you can find Red Beach One Studios on Pinterest, but it's not necessarily... Pinterest is not necessarily a social media platform. It's more of like... Uh, looking for photos or ideas or something like that. It's a different format. Uh, it's social media in a different way. It's more of like an art form, but that's where we are. You can find Red Beach One Studios on several different social media platforms. Just type in Red Beach One Studios and click search and you'll find us and then come like and subscribe and follow us and all that kind of stuff. We're getting some great following there. We're starting to get some great feedback from people. And uh, people are starting to take notice that, you know, uh, we do a lot of good stuff. And uh, we always get, uh, yeah, you should be doing a little bit more modeling and stuff like that and putting some of your work in progress up there. And we'll get to that soon enough. 
Uh, but we can only work on models right now on Sundays for about four to five hours each week. So we're kind of limited on what we can do. And uh, so the progress is very slow. All right, guys, this is Rob from Red Beach One Studios. We're going to sign off today. We did a little bit longer video today because we haven't done one in a while. And we wanted to cover down on all those things. So we want to thank everyone for watching our video. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon for, for notifications because uh, what happens is it gets us a little bit more visibility on YouTube. All right, guys, we're going to sign off today. Enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy happy modeling and let's hit the bench.